Ladies and gentlemen, good day to you. And uh, to start with, I would like to say something which should bring together us all. Us all who function in agriculture, but not only. If we do not, if, if we do not take care about the soil now and the earth now, the future generations will have to deal with very negative consequences. If we do not act in these decades, the, the damage that we've done will be irreversible. And the results felt not only by the future generations, but by us all living today. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the results of the of the, the of the damage in the agriculture we feel it today we you can see the uh, the natural disasters what was being said here by dr rutas pievak about the losses sustained by the by our economy as a result of drought or flood Global warming threatens agriculture and the food security, generating huge costs for economy. The agricultural activity impacts in a huge way the, the climate changes. It's responsible for one third of the global uh, greenhouse gas emissions. It's a huge um, share in the global greenhouse gas emissions. The production of uh, um, nitrogen-based fertilizers and pesticides uh, causes huge emissions of CO2 into the atmosphere. The CO2 emission uh, means also the use of a huge amount of energy. One kilogram of nitrogen-based fertilizer is 35 kilojoules. It's one liter of uh, fuel. One kilogram of nitrogen fertilizer causes the emission of 2.38 kilogram of CO2 into the atmosphere. In the, at the scale of uh, Europe, it's 11 million of used uh, uh, nitrogen fertilizer and 11 million liters of fuel. The, fert the, the fertile uh, layer of the soil is responsible for accumulation of the CO2 and decrease of the uh, greenhouse effect. At some point uh, in, in the past, uh, the soil was able to, to accumulate 38 kilograms of CO2 in a, in a cubic meter. Today, it's just four, uh, four kilograms per cubic meter. So you can see how much the, the fertile element has decreased in the soil over that time. Over 20 centimeter, over 20 centimeter layer of fertile soil has decreased uh, by even 90 percent in some countries, which immensely impacted uh, the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. There are farms, ladies and gentlemen, in Spain, for example, which where the farmers who who are farming intensively their soil, they they get down to the bare rock. What does that mean? That means a huge disaster. In order for this small uh, layer of uh, of fertile. Uh, soil to be developed that, that it takes like hundreds of years uh, intensive use of synthetic fertilizers and nitrogen caused the de de degradation of the soil so the, the, the organic material has decreased uh, it is heavily contam contaminated with uh, heavy metals and other contaminating elements and uh, and compounds such soil uh, absorb CO2 on, in a minimal way and do not also retain water because of low organic content.
What is a soil? Soil is a, sh is a very thin layer of uh, minerals and life uh, organisms uh, and remains of uh, dead animals and plants, which covers covers the, the our globe and is the mother of all all the life on Earth and is the most strategic resource for everybody. David Montgomery said so. In in nature, who in nature presented the vision of 2020, and he did it in in the year 2010. What do we need to do to secure the biodiversity of our soil? We need to. Uh, we have to stop the threat for life uh, of uh, in, in the soil and change the uh, the um, social understanding of what's happening below our feet. The catastrophic uh, tempo, the, the catastrophic rate of loss of biodiversity uh, is here. Like we, we, there are like five thousand, we have five thousand uh, species dying, uh, going extinct extinct uh, within one day. So this average rate of uh, extinction is th is 1,000 faster than in the prehistoric times. The world has to the world has to tackle the challenge of the loss of biodiversity, which is the biggest problem of the century and which is under uh, underrated in terms of severity. And it's pretty, the results are not readily seen. Please be aware that an important, the most important uh, element, so to speak, uh, which to the biggest extent uh, made us move away from uh, from reasonable management of the land was the preparation of uh, of a process by Havel Bosch and that was considered to be the biggest uh, technological advance of, t of the 20th century the allowing of synthesis of the e econ economic scale synthesis of ammonia and that was the beginning of the synthetic uh, fertilizer production and synthetic fertilizers mean are a very a very big stress for the uh, for the, for the uh, um, microflora and decreasing means decreasing the biodiversity intensification of agriculture over the last 40 years looks in the following way we had two times increase of global food production but two to five times uh, the the MPK, MPK production has increased. Here we've got a two times uh, increase and five to seven times uh, increase in uh, artificial fertilizer uh, fertilizing because of the increase of, of the decreasing effectiveness of the artificial fertilizer in the in, in uh, uh, agriculture. You would you need five to seven more. You need five to seven times more um, artificial fer fertilizers than 40 years ago to produce one kilogram of food. What are the what are the what is the impact of using the uh, synthetic fertilizers? If the nitrogen is readily available in the in the global in, in the soil solution, the the plants. Uh, intake is surplus of water they, they they grow very big but at the same time they have very very small dry mass they have very small uh, mass that is related to your health and it, it, they are really and also the uh, they store pretty badly in terms of the soil uh, using synthetic fertilizers causes the decrease of biodiversity of uh, soil organisms especially um, the the bacteria which are good for the for for the agri agricultural production also the organic ma organic matter decreases in the soil and uh, and this decrease deepens the water deficit in the soil. And these are the main problems that uh, the, the, the today's agriculture have to tackle. 
If we are talking about the phosphorus uh, um, fertilizers, these fertilizers uh, introduce heavy metals into the soil, such as cad cadmium and arsenic. Another um, factor which caused that uh, reasonable uh, land tending uh, is sort of was considered obsolete was the uh, revolution in by the United Nations, which uh, introduced monoculture, melioration, uh, of. Uh, superfluous use of water and the use of uh, artificial fertilizers and pestic pesticides and weed killers. How can you stop the threat of, to the life of the soil? You need to stop the threat to the life of the soil because the degradation has afflicted already one third of the of the of the arable land. Every year, 1.5 percent of arable land disappears. Since since over 70 years, when uh, chemical uh, weed killers were introduced and synthetic uh, um, fertilizers had been introduced, the the micro ele the micro element and vitamin content uh, in the soil decrease. Here I will give you a, an example of the rate of uh, loss of uh, nutritional value of the food. These are the results of from 19 uh, of the research from 1985 to 96, where the, the nutritional value of potato, for example, the calcium decreased by 40 percent, magnesium 33 percent, and banana in bananas the fruit which should give us a lot of uh, folic acid and B6 vitamin, uh, they do not have that vitamin anymore. Because over the, over 10 years, uh, the, their content decreased by 87%. Vi vitamin B6, 82% decrease. And vitamin C decreased over 10 years by 80%, and calcium by 11% in strawberries. And here I wanted to show you what is the impact of fertilizing, using fertilizers on and with killers on the content of uh, of very of, of, of the more important mm, mm, of the of the important nutritional elements in the in the food, you can see here the the conventional elements, the green and the, the ecological, uh, the lutein, for example, a very a very important uh, compound which which uh, decides about your good eyesight, included in in uh, salad, decreases sorry by lettuce decreases by half as a result of using the of using the f the the wheat killers and also um, as a result of fertilizing glucosinolase that is in um, in cabbage these are the com bioactive compounds which we can find in many um, cabbage uh, cabbages they also play a lot of uh, a big role as a uh, pro-health uh, compounds, but they also have an insecticide uh, um, effect, so they scare away the insects from from these uh, plants. Here you can you can see that uh, fertilizing using artificial fertilizer fertilizer has a huge impact on uh, uh, on the content. And the vitamin C, please uh, notice that to a large extent, uh, by half, uh, the vitamin C is decreased by synthetic fertilizing, whereas in uh, wheat, uh, sorry, in plant protection, uh, plant protection, uh, it has no impact on uh, vitamin C content. Karen, 
carotenoids in in the lettuce are decreased by half by plant protection uh, chemicals and to a lesser extent by synthetic fertilizing. I wanted to say that synthetic fertilizing which is being used uh, broadly in um, agricultural farms in conventional agriculture brings uh, gives only three uh, macronutrients um, nitrogen phosphorus and potassium but over 50 micro elements and minerals are lacking from that the, 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 but they are needed for the soil to be healthy and rich in enzymes and microorganisms and which are also needed to human beings who eat who feed who feeds on those plants and in the soil which are um, uh, all, a soil which only is um, um, fertilized by NPK we get food which is very low in uh, nutritional quality a very good doctors from uh, uh, doctors have stated that a lot a lot of uh, um, uh, very pervasive pervasive uh, uh, um, diseases stem from the lack from from the lack of important uh, micro elements and these are the doctors who are very effectively uh, cure people from i don't know cancer and other important uh, the serious diseases uh, diseases by using micro elements and vitamins in order to uh, prevent that those negative uh, phenomena we can see in the uh, conventional farming is the ecological farming the ecological methods of farming which which increase which in effect bring the increase of organic matter content and uh, in the soil they s stay away from using pest pesticides and uh, um, artificial fertilizers and by this improve the quality of the food which elements are included sorry are used in the which methods are used in um, um, ecological farming sustainable farming ecological fertilizers especially compost also, microbiological uh, preparations are very e effective. They promote the growth of uh, plants and also s s protect them from stress. Especially biotic stress, which is uh, which is mainly um, diseases and uh, uh, and pests. So, if you take all those elements, if you use all those elements in the ecological farming, then you can really get to a very good result. You can get very high quality food and uh, achieve a very good uh, crop, sometimes even better than crops which are being uh, achieved in the conventional farms. Here I wanted to tell you about the, the big uh, role of compost in fertilizing the soil. The organizers of this conference have uh, they, they have farms using a, a big amount of uh, of compost, and it was proved that if you cover one time, if you cover the soil with compost, you increase the growth of plants by seventy percent. At the same time. Uh, this compost uh, absorbs CO2 by 37% more than in the than the soil in uh, the farms, where the organic part of the soil is very small. The fertility, the fertility of the soil. This is the most important goal to which we should uh, strive. The fertility is the ability of the soil to uh, to secure the needs of plants, and the, to improving the fertility consists in rebuilding the, the organic content of the of the land. The all those elements are in the humus. They are all in the soil. Uh, but you need to 
uh, enable them to the plants. We enable those elements to the plants uh, through microorganisms. If we, as I've said, if we're use, using the the synthetic uh, fertilizing, it decreases the 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 amount or the content of the microorganisms, especially the most uh, beneficial ones in the soil. Apart from that, uh, the microorganisms they they can. Uh, uh, they can keep in the the nitrogen. They can they clean up, keep up. The, they can sort of retain even 500 nitro, uh, kilograms of nitrogen per hectare. So if you have a uh, humus-rich soil, uh, you do not need any additional fertilizing because all the fertilizing elements and all the fertilizing compounds will be in there. Próchnica, będąc kluczowym elementem materii organicznej gleby, jest gwarantem. Which humus is a guarantee of the stability of the soil and retaining bigger amounts of water. It has an ability to secure to keep over thirty percent more water in the. Uh, retention in the uh, soil. So if you in if you increase the uh, organic content uh, in the soil by one percent uh, in one hectare, uh, you can retain 130,000 liters of water more uh, in that hectare. Let me repeat that once again. Uh, ensuring all the nutritional elements uh, for the plants will is ensured by the use of natural mat minerals natural uh, the compost natural fertilizers with much lower costs than synthetic fertilizers in effect of ecological uh, farming the uh, the content of the uh, Organic material and humus in the soil increases, and the, the, its liveability with of high uh, biological activity and the, the availability of a number of minerals. As a consequence, such a soil will absorb more water and more CO2, and increases its uh, biodiversity. And in a fertile soil, which is very important. Uh, you, the, a rich soil uh, bring plants or breed plants uh, very high in um, mineral and vitamin content, which are which is uh, beneficial for humans. And I will talk to you now about the effect of the ecological or sustainable um, uh, agriculture on the health of people. Already, is, already the kids are exposed. Oh, there's a there's a smaller probability of allergies in kids who are who eat who are provided with ecological nutrition, and also with the grown-ups, there's a lower probability of obesity in comparison to other consumers. The consumers who uh, eat uh, ecological food on a daily basis have a, have a healthier diet, so also with a higher content of, uh, of uh, vegetables and uh, fruit and lower, lower meat uh, intake in comparison to other consumers. As a result of eating such products, there's a lower probability of uh, propensity of uh, for diabetes, uh, cardiovascular diseases, and this is also very beneficial for the protection of environment, of course. Uh, there was some tests made on animals, which I will show you the table later, which show that uh, already during the first, but especially the second generation of those animals, you can see uh, a, a notable 
um, improvement of their health uh, parameters. For example, there were uh, there were tests made on the on the cancer cells of the breast cancer, which sh showed that uh, there's a lower pr proliferation rate uh, in comparison with people who are fed on the con conventional food. Uh, the beetroot you had a bigger anti-cancerogenic and uh, anti-cancer uh, activity than the uh, than the. Uh, beetroot uh, from conventional farming. The cause for such positive changes is the high antioxidant content, especially phenol, uh, phenol content in ecological uh, fruit and uh, vegetable. There's a lower, the lower, lower uh, exposure to pesticides for people who consume ecological food. And here I wanted to present the position of of, prof, of Dr. Kayat. Kayat. He's a French oncologist who who ab abolished several myths on ab of. The, several theories about uh, healthy food he said he said that five portions of vegetables and uh, and fruit which are ad advised to be to be eaten every day can support the development of cancer because over 70% of detrimental uh, substances uh, of contaminated environment come from the, from contaminated food, uh, f fruit and vegetables. These are mainly pesticides, and mainly such such vegetables which are contaminated with pesticides are pepper, uh, are red and green pepper, um, grapes, and uh, and strawberries. So it's base, best to buy food and vegetable from ecological uh, farming. The food, uh, vitamin supplements and and uh, artificial supplements are not able to replace them because the organism organism does not mm, absorb artificial artificial um, uh, supplements that well. There was there were tests made in the United States on the um, on the order of the uh, global. Uh, Institute for the uh, Research of Cancer, where the, the the impact of different types of food on cancer and can cancerogenics was uh, tested, and as a as a result, only the ecological food was uh, recommended for eating, because it occurred that only the ecological food stopped the existing uh, the existing cancer cells, which was not uh, found in case of conventional food or indust industrially generated food. And here you can see the table which shows to what, ex what are the average differences between the uh, conventional food and ecological food when it comes to bioactive uh, um, compounds. Vitamin C in uh, ecological production, you, you can see the, the uh, over 30% surplus over the conventional food. Uh, please note that phenol substances, you can see there are over 120% more in ecological products. And the same goes for uh, for number of minerals uh, like uh, iron, magnesium. You can you can you can find them uh, in a bigger amount in ecological food. Also, the ecological fruit in include more sugars than uh, uh, the conventional food. It uh, Lysin is a very important um, uh, amino acid because it builds collagen together with uh, uh, vitamin C, it, which protects your cells from uh, cancers. And you can have you, you have more of that in uh, ecological food. Ecological products also have a better taste and and uh, smell. The bioactive uh, compounds, such as phenol compounds, vitamins, all active compounds in in the, uh, in the plants, they decide about a better taste of ecological products. 
Ladies and gentlemen, in 2014, a certain meta-analysis was made of, based on 343 uh, papers which compared ecological food with the conventional food. And as a result of this meta-analysis, so this statistical recalculation or, and combination of all those uh, scientific papers, it was stated that pro ecological products have uh, more antioxidants such as um, uh, phenolic acids, fla flavonoids, flavonols, antioxidants in comparison to, uh, if compared against their conventional uh, peers or counterparts. And the, 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 the percentage difference is from 18 to 69 percent to the advantage of the ecological food. The lower differences were found in carotenoids and uh, vitamin C case. If we now, if we decide to eat only ecological food, we can we can get to from 24 to 40 percent, and in some cases 60 percent increase of consumption of antioxidants without without any uh, increase of the caloric intake. So you can eat less of those ecological products and you will uh, introduce more antioxidants into your uh, organism. So one thing that I already said that with the synthetic, uh, the synthetic fertilizer introduced to the soil and to the food, cadmium and other heavy metals. In ecological production, you have uh, half the value of what you can find in uh, conventional uh, products. Nitrogen. Nitrogen is like in the, the, the half. There's like 30 percent less of uh, azotic compounds, uh, of nitrogen compounds, uh, which gives you another example of uh, of a much more valuable of, of how ecological food is much more valuable in terms of of impact on your health. How can you explain that? What is the mechanism of or the, the modus of operandi? Uh, the, in the ecological system, you have you have an easily easily uh, absorbable um, nitrogen, and uh, the, the, in this case, the the plants produce mainly uh, um, carbon compounds like simple like uh, simple sugars and other elements that do not include uh, nitrogen. They produce phenolic uh, compounds, uh, vitamins, etc., uh, etc. Et in um, in environments, in conventional environments, which are very rich in nitrogen, the metabolism of plants uh, is directed towards very intensive generation of uh, of uh, nitrogen-rich uh, elements. Uh, sorry, compounds. I don't know if you can see that uh, the the dry mass content. Here, I'm showing you. I'm showing you a chart from my own research. You can see in one field, on one field, you, there was a one field held was tended with uh, ecological methods, and next to it, uh, there was synthetic uh, fertilizer used. But and the compost used in ecological um, uh, on the ecological field uh, was calculated to, to include the same amount of uh, macro elements that as as in NPK uh, fertilizing at the, in the same uh, and the, at the same field uh, you can see the in all conditions for the for, in all types of plants because we had cabbage we have we had lettuce we had uh, we had carrots the ecological part included such a much bigger content of dry mass and phenolic compounds. 
And in terms of beta carotene, there was no difference, which which uh, supported the uh, the uh, reset so far. And lutein, it was even one. It was bigger than by one third in the ecological carrot because ca carrot is rich in carotene and lutein. The vitamin C content, uh, the, the one which has the, the biggest vitamin C is, uh, plant is, is the cabbage, and you, see, you can see that it had 30% more in the ecological cabbage. And here you can see a table which describes the impact the impact of uh, ecological and uh, artificially fertilized plants on the fertility of rabbits. You can see that in the first first generation there is no difference, but in the second uh, generation you have much of a much bigger uh, number of uh, fertile um, uh, female rabbits in uh, among the, the population fed with ecological food. And in the next generation, these these uh, changes, th these differences increase even more. In terms of f animal food, animal derived food, if the f the animals are only fed with uh, with like big mass fodder and they have low uh, concentrates both in the milk and in the in the meat, there there are more omega three acids in the food which are very important for the uh, uh, for the health of humans and many other important bioactive uh, many other bioactive um, compounds are both in the uh, in the meat uh, and in the milk it was proved that that 80 percent of antibiotics uh, produced in the world uh, are used with animals in in ecological farming and ecological agriculture, you do not use uh, antibiotics, and these animals really do not uh, go, are, are not getting sick so so much. They, they do not get the diseases so much. If they are, uh, you know, the ruminating animals should eat mostly, uh, mostly uh, f like volume feed foodstuffs, and then they do not go. They do not uh, get sick. They do not go. Uh, they do not have problems with health. And these are so. These are the the There are additional consequences of using the. These are the consequences of uh, using the uh, antibiotics in uh, farming. So. Uh, it, to, to sum up, the ecological farming ensures safe production of food uh, without the leftovers from pesticides and more uh, and more bioactive and micro elements protecting the organisms of a human from from disease. We uh, we should intensify in our country, uh, increase the uh, effort towards the ecological production and awareness of the consumers. The consequence of that would be the increase of uh, um, consumption of ecolog ecological production, which will uh, increase the uh, social health and decrease the costs of uh, health care. An investment in the further development of uh, ecological production can improve the possibilities of uh, providing high quality food from, uh, uh, from sustainable and safe uh, agricultural practices. Thank you very much for your attention.